G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to Shit Easy Motorcycle Camp Cooking. Now, I'm not 100% sure where we're going to go with this bloody video series or whatever, but um, as, the, as, the, as the bloody title says, Shit Easy. So this isn't going to be Mark's gourmet bloody cooking, motorcycle cook, cooking bullshit with herbs and spices and all that kind of stuff. It's basically, like it says, Shit Easy. So when we're out on a trip, um, hang on, well, what we'll do is we'll sit down and we'll bloody just go through it properly. Alright, so where we're going with this bloody video series, I think, <laughs> is basically the whole idea of this is um, having food that we can throw on the motorbike and then take off. So whether that's for overnight or whether it's for the weekend, um, maybe later in the series we might look at doing it where we're going for a week at a time. Um, and having to carry the stuff on our on our bike, and and not be pulling up somewhere and buying, you know, getting bloody uh, refills and all that kind of stuff. So the whole problem with that is that we don't have refrigeration, so it cuts down all the stuff that we can use. And instead of just going, oh, well, I'll eat bloody nut bars and you know all that kind of stuff, is there stuff that we can use um, that can get it um, can be like get it similar tasting or whatever. Um, to what we normally eat, I suppose, when we're at home. And I've been doing this for quite a while, and what really kicked me off from doing it was at uh, when I did the Simpson, across that Simpson, and I actually bought, I bought these. Now, I actually tested this before I left, and I ate it, and I went, oh, you know, it's, it's all right, I can handle that. Well, I tell you, once you're out there and you're buggered and you've been riding all bloody day, the last thing you want to do, and I actually had to force this shit down, um, to actually get just to get the nutrients because I bloody needed it. Um, so that's what got me on this on this thing of trying to um, find stuff that I can eat. And, I, and I've learnt now that just um, having a taste and a few spoonsfuls of something doesn't mean that it is just going to be okay. You really need to sit down and have it as a meal, maybe a couple of times even. Um, to really go, yeah, 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 I can eat this and that's not a problem, even if I'm stuffed or, 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 or whatever. All right, am I rambling? I'm sure I'm rambling. So I'm just going to go through all little bits and different different bits and pieces. We'll most probably even look at uh, cooking stoves. I mean, I've done that stuff before, but just, you know, stoves and pots and pans and all that kind of stuff. And obviously I'm going to cook this stuff up um, and eat it for you. I won't watch, make you watch me eat it for too much. Um, and then there's all, so a part of all this is finding things that, like this stuff here, which is salami, um, that you can just, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. When you go to the supermarket, you find it in the refrigerator, but you don't have to refrigerate it. But there's a trick to it because not all salamis are the same, which I'll explain. So tonight, just in tonight's video, I'm going to be talking about the bloody salami and what I do for for a lunch, which is having the bickies, that, and of course cheese, cheese that doesn't have to be refrigerated. Now you've got to remember, obviously, you know, that you've got to have a sum give and take. This cheese isn't as good as the cheese that I have sitting in the fridge um, to eat. But for myself, and that's the other thing, is that everybody's different what, what you like, I might not like, like you might like bloody fish. I don't like fish. The only fish I'll eat is uh, flake from the uh, the fish and chip shop. Uh, so there you go. All right, so I think, oh, and later on when I was talking about uh, maybe some of the, the week long stuff, today me and Nay went to, um, it was a DIY bloody expo here in Bendigo. We went, we went there and a the guy was selling this bloody, uh, Vacuum sealer, so I thought, oh, bugger it. And he had all the stuff, all the fruit and meat and bloody nuts and um, oh, a whole heap of stuff there. And I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, yeah, what a bloody great idea. So a lot of you guys will most probably know about this. I think you guys in America are pretty big on, on the whole bloody vacuum seal, sealing stuff. Well, that might be the doomsday prepper people, I don't know. Um, so I've never, I've never really played with this stuff, so we'll most probably have a look at uh, doing that and, and running some tests, you know, whether we put a banana in and then seal it up and then leave a banana and then we'll leave it for a week and see what the differences are, blah, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, lots of stuff, is, that's what I hope we're going to do. Um, so we'll see how we go. All right, I'll stop 
rambling and we'll get into it. Oh guys, actually before we get into it, I just realised I forgot to bring out the tins of Spam and bloody hot dogs and bits and pieces. Uh, which is obviously, they're tins and they're heavy and all that kind of stuff. So what I've got to mention, I don't know what other countries are like, but here in Australia, obviously we're a very dry climate. So when we're heading out into um, into the outback, which is where I'm prone, I'm always drawn into the outback. You know, there's plenty of places in Australia where you can go to rainforests and you know all that kind of stuff and the hill mountains and all that, where there are creeks and streams and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, because I'm drawn into the outback, well, there's not much bloody water around. So, um, what I'm, I suppose what I'm getting at is, I wanted to touch base a little bit too, as well, is that, you know, we're going for this stuff. Because, you yeah, know, we, we see that hikers, someone mentioned to me that, you know, you should check out the hikers and all the, the stuff they take. And I've done all that, and, and that's right, they are. They're really good and bloody tricky with all what they do and trying to keep the weight down. Because they're carrying that shit on their bloody back. Um... So you go, well, which which one do I go for? And well, obviously that one's the one to go for because it's a hell of a lot bloody lighter, isn't it? But then you go, well, shit, I've got to carry the water for this. Whereas a lot of those ones that do the hiking trails, they're going through and they've got streams, they're following streams and all that kind of stuff. So they've always got a ready source of water. Yeah, they'll have their water purification, bloody pumps and all that kind of stuff. But for the likes of uh, people heading into the outback or places where there's not much water, I've got to carry the water for this. So then, well, which way so is it then I'm carrying the same bloody weight? So, yeah, do you know what I'm getting at? <laughs> um, so they're going to be, yeah, touch and base on, on that. And that's where those tins come into it as well. But yeah, so I'm obviously doing this. It's all basically Australian based and my preference of where I'm traveling, which are places where there's not ready readily available water all right let's go all right guys so this video is about doing a lunch and it's going to be a cold lunch and it's going to be, or a hot lunch i'm hoping that it's going to work two two ways i haven't done the hot part of it um, i wanted to leave that for for this but instead of you know having a pulling up and having a crunchy bar and a coffee i wanted to have something that was a little bit more substantial and that's where these salamis um, come into it now i was saying about there was a bit of a trick so these salamis, now in Australia, it's Don, you know, hey, Don is good. Um, that's a mild Hungarian. You'll find these in the refrigerated area, area of this. So you think, oh, shit, if I get it, I've got to refrigerate it. Well, no, you don't. But I said there was a tricky thing with them. On the back of these um, salamis, if it says heat treated, you don't have to refrigerate it. You can leave that out, and I've I've done that. I've had these on bloody you know those sand bloody riding trips, just sitting in the, in the bag. It works. It's not a problem. You're not going to get food poisoning. Um, so that's the trick. So remember when you're looking on the back. I'll see if I can get a close up of this. All right, guys. So if you can see that, it says heat treated. So manufactured meat, heat treated. But when we scroll around down here. It says ready to eat, keep refrigerated at, um, you know, whatever that is, bloody four degrees or whatever. So yeah, so it says keep refrigerated, but you don't have to. As long as it says on there that it was, that it's heat treated, you're safe to have that out of the refrigerator. And I've done it for at least a week and I've eaten it and I've taken it on trips and I have not had any adverse um, effects from it. Um, and obviously, you know, once you open this up, because I actually cut this up ready to go into into chunks, and then when I'm bloody having it, I then cut it up to put it on. But I put glad wrap over it and I seal it all up. So obviously, once you open, cut it open. Once the air's getting to it, that's going to lessen it. So if you put glad wrap over it, that's going to seal it. But if you've had it for maybe a couple of days sitting there, what you would do is cut the end part off that's exposed. That's not in this. Um, and I'm not talking about this. Let me get this out. Jesus, how much yell. Nearly lost it. So obviously I've got it out of that. But this has a cover over it. And what I'll do is I'll uh, cut it up. I'm using a multi-tool. So something that I'll be using out. Um, I always bring the multi-tool. 
Um, so if we cut this open, so you can see see that. So around here is actually a skin. But when you cut it open like that, and what I would do is go right out. That's how much I'm going to want for my lunch. I'll put me bickies. Bickies or crackers or whatever. I mean, every country is going to be saying stuff different. Actually, I should have. I would then put. I would actually glad wrap that. So it'd be glad wrap. These cheese sticks. I'd put a couple of cheese sticks or one cheese stick in there. So the point I'm trying to make is that, as you can see, these ends are now exposed. So if if I'd been a couple of days and I and I looked at it and I went. Oh, I'm not too sure. What I'd do is I'd sacrifice, you know, a little bit of the end and just piff that. Piff. <laughs> um, and, and the birds or whatever will bloody eat it. So that then that would be fine to eat. Did I make all that sense? I start talking and then I forget what I bloody said. Alright, so I just checked the bloody footage and I'm, I'm, on, I'm on bloody track. So, I just want to show you this, uh, this little casing stuff. I've actually eaten that, that casing stuff and it doesn't seem to be a problem. But if you don't like doing that, I'll just put a bit of a cut. Get a bit of a peel going. And then you'll see that. That. Now I'm pretty sure that that is some type of edible plastic, I'm not too sure, but that's where you end up with. So you can do that, which is most of the time I end up cutting it off now anyway. <clears throat> All right, so that's got it. Bickies are easy, they'll just store no worries. I've now worked out that I can, I can have this, um, this meat. And you know, if I'm you, your best sense of bloody um, working out, you know, things have use by dates and all that kind of stuff. But your best sense is is your smell or your taste. You know, if you, if you're a bit sus, you know, smell it, and then you go, oh, I'm not too sure. You can have a bit of a nibble, and you, you're pretty going to be pretty switched on to knowing whether something's not right or not. Um, so if we're thinking, oh, it's a, it's a bit dodgy, we can slice a little piece off, throw that off, like I said, and we're set. We've still got our meat. So I was talking about these cheese sticks, and there's also this stuff. So you can get this at the supermarket. Um, it's craft cheddar here in Australia. Obviously, you know, other countries are going to have the same. I don't know, but anyway. So this stuff, you don't have to refrigerate it. What I've been doing, I'll just cut that. So these are things that kids um, you know, parents give their kids to put in their bloody lunchbox to take to school. So, what well, that just gets plopped in there. Remember that's got glad wrap or cling wrap, I think Americans say cling wrap. The poms, I don't know what you guys call it. Well, most probably the same as you guys. Um, so that all goes in there, sealed up, goes in my bag, and then when I pull up, all I've got to do is pull that out, and there's my lunch. So it's a bit, I don't know, I see that as a bit more wholesome food than eating a buddy crunchy nut bar or whatever. <clears throat> and of course these are just simply buddy, oh, find the little little groove, oh, I'll get that, and then it just comes out like that. I'm doing this a bit dodgy, but hey, squeeze out your bugger. All right, so I've got me cheese, and that cheese will travel no worries. I tried, um, oh, I tried other cheese that you normally have in the in the in the um, in the refrigerator, but uh, <laughs> when I went to use it, it was all soft and icky, and I was like, oh, this ain't gonna work. And that's how I got onto the, onto this stuff, and I like it; it works for me. So then, when I'm out there, I just bloody get me meat. Slice off a piece of that. And there you go. Yummy. Revolt oh. down here. Want some cheese? <laughs> I was sending her a little crazy. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Nays just told me that Americans call it Saran wrap. She's just over there. Saran wrap. So this is what when I was saying Glad wrap or Cling wrap. Um, basically, it's this stuff. Oh, come on. That stuff there. Beauty. All right, now we all know what we're talking about. <laughs> All right, so now what we've got to do is turn that into a hot meal. So I've got to go and get the other little ingredient. Hang on. All right, guys, so I've now set myself up with my little stove. I've got my little fry pan. I made up this, I don't know if you remember me doing the uh, the headlight out of the bloody cookie baking tray duvalaki. I had some leftover stuff. Uh, one of the videos I had where I had a dinner roll that we used out at uh, Whipperfell National Park and I heated it up in this. I've since made one of these to stop it from burning um, the roll on the pan. So I just put that in there. This is the little, a little pita, I think it's pita bread pocket. What do they call it? Man? Pita snackables white. I'll give you a look at that. I just found it at the uh, the supermarket, so it's pita bread, um, and it's a little pocket. And I, I thought, shit, you know what? I could cram the cheese and the salami into that, and then put it on there and heat it up so that it all melts in there, and that should be a pretty good warm um, lunch. So we're going to give it a bloody shot now. So I reckon I should be able to just put my knife in there and just open. Oh, jeez, I'm going too far. Just, there we go. Cut that open a bit. This is really hard trying to do this and so you guys can see it. I'm most probably making a hack of it now. But basically that's what I'm doing, opening that pocket up. So I'm gonna put some cheese in there. So I just cut this cheese up, you guys can see that. Just thinly bloody cut it all up. Now, as, as I said, I haven't done this before. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Whack that in there. So we've got some cheese in there. We'll cut this stuff thin pieces. That should be enough. <clears throat> that in there. Mash all that up like that, so there you go. That goes straight in there, so I shouldn't have to put any oil or butter. Butter is what I'm bloody starting to use these days. So I should be able to just turn this on. Oh, get that out of the way. Let's go on. Put that on there. Now, this pot that I, the pot set that I have, so I have a, a pot um, and a pan and they just fit together, so I've got a lid. Now the reason, like you could do it in the pot and then stick that over like that, so it's creating like an oven. But when I'm out there, I would be cooking my, uh, boiling my water in this for my cup of tea. So I'll use the pan and even though this lid doesn't fit on that pan, if I just cover that over like that, that should create it, you know, make it all melt and make it all warm and yummy. All right, I'll come back to you when it's when it's done. All right, guys, so I reckon that's pretty much done. You can see in here, hopefully. Oh, Jesus. Ah. Hang on a minute, what's going on? Stuck, I'm burnt, damn it. Ooh, ah, ah. Shit, that's bloody hot. Ah. 
I don't know if you can see in there, so all that cheese is melted. I actually, halfway through it, I put some more on top to so you could see the cheese. Well, there's more cheese underneath. But as you can see, I've burnt it there on the bottom. Oh, ah. Leave it a minute <laughs> and then I'll come back to you. All right, guys, so I reckon it's cooled down a bit. So yeah, I've buggered up there. Maybe I should have put a bit of oil um, or um, butter in the bottom of there, or I should have turned it, but I didn't turn it because it, this is the part where it was uh, had the slip. But anyway, that should add to the flavor. And like I said, I'm no gourmet chef. Here we go. That's pretty bloody good. Yeah. That salami is really good. I'm not, I don't like spicy stuff or, you know, hot stuff. Um, so that salami there is mild spice. And this one here, which they call white, white Hungarian um, salami. I think it's just straight. There's no spice in it um, at all. Mmm. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't too sure about this cheese how it would um, melt up, but I reckon that's a bloody winner. I'll be uh, definitely um, doing that. Normally when I'm pulling up for lunch, you know, I don't, It's we're pulling up, we just, as quickly as possible, just get have our food and a cup of coffee and then we're bloody on again. But, uh, you know, if we wanted to pull up for a little while and just, you know, muck around, I'd certainly do this. That is really good. Really surprising. Ha! Huh. So there you go, there's another one. <clears throat> another one to the uh, to the cooking kit. Alright guys, so hopefully this hasn't been too arduous to watch. Obviously if it was you would have just pissed off anyway. <laughs> So hopefully that's giving you an idea of what this, this video things are going to be about. It's just showing stuff, maybe making you guys uh, think out of the box and with you know, stuff that you like to eat and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then just running through all that kind of stuff. So the next video we'll do um, will be on eggs and bacon like for breakfast. Uh, so that's, that'll be, what I normally have every day is I have bacon and eggs with spinach leaves and, you know, those little cherry tomatoes. I have a couple of those and I cut them all up. And I've done that before, like on one of the last rides I did, but I actually had a little esky and I put some ice stuff in it. It worked for the first night, but then uh, the second night I wasn't too, uh, too sure about uh, the bacon the way it was. <clears throat> so I've... I've been using this bloody uh, spam bacon. If you can see that spam bacon, and I think that's oh, what's that? That's just leg ham. So I've been testing this, and I've been eating it. And I've what I've worked out is crazy because I don't like spam. I just don't like the taste of it. It's like ugh, yuck. Don't like it. But I've worked out how to do it and how to make it taste just like bloody bacon. It's crazy. Uh, there's differences between that just a normal leg ham and this spam bacon stuff. I don't know whether the normal spam, I think the normal spam will be more like that. Um, uh, there's differences you know, to do with cutting and, and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be what we're going to do um, next week. Alright guys, uh, there you go. Keep on riding. <laughs>